Today, I am doing my first gaming review ever. It is on the subject of the game Mario Kart 8. Now, Mario Kart always promises fun for the whole family. The eighth installation of the series, Mario Kart 8, is no different, but just how good of a game is it? Well, let's find out. Tracks on tracks on tracks. Mario Kart 8 has two DLC packs for a total of 48 tracks. 25 of them being brand new, and 23 of them returning from previous games. This is the most tracks out of any Mario Kart game, and they all look stunning in HD. Some of my personal faves are Sunshine Airport, Bowser's Castle, Big Blue, Electrodrome, and Cloudtop Cruise. There is an excellent selection of retro tracks, with Music Park on the 3DS and Yoshi Valley from the N64 being two of my favorites, despite having a fine selection of tracks. The Rainbow Road really sucked. I know some people liked it, but to me, the Wii and 3DS versions were far better. One thing that really made the tracks interesting is the new gimmick that Mario Kart 8 added, Anti-Gravity. Now, Anti-Gravity allowed for some pretty neat track design, and whenever you'd bump into another player, you'd get a speed boost. That is pretty damn cool. Blue Shell Demolisher. Who doesn't love the wacky items in Mario Kart? The classic shells, mushrooms, bananas, bullet bill, and blue shell. <sighs> I'll return in this game. Three cool new items were also introduced. The potted piranha plant bites other racers while giving you speed boosts. The crazy eight gives you a fabulous array of items similar to the lucky seven from Mario Kart 7, and then there's the Super Horn, which allows you to get rid of the blue shell itself. There's two main problems with this game's items. First off, the coin. Really? It grants you two coins? You have no idea how annoying this is in first place until you play this game. And the item distribution can be a major issue. There are times where you'll get triple red shells in second place, and a solitary green shell in 11th. This is not fair. How did IGN possibly list item distribution as a positive for this game? I don't know. Pink Gold Parasite. The character roster is one of the game's main issues. All the classics come back, sure, but why were characters like Bowser Jr., Diddy Kong, and Birdo neglected? What's worse, the roster has an array of clone characters. Baby Peach, Baby Daisy, Baby Rosalina, Tanuki Mario, Metal Mario, Cat Peach, and possibly the worst set of them all, Pink Gold Peach. Ugh, it hurts my eyes looking at it. And while I don't mind the Koopalings being in Mario Kart, I think they should be from a drop-down menu. In conclusion, at least there's Waluigi, unlike in Mario Kart 7. <laughs> oh yeah. Playing against the world. Mario Kart 8 has some great online gameplay. Racing against people from all over the world, you're sure to have some fun. The problem is the waiting room. It shouldn't take you 30 seconds to have to pick between three tracks. Other than that, great online mode. Controls. This game has excellent controls. I've played it on both the gamepad and using a Wii Remote. Drifting is excellent. You have an option to turn on and off motion controls. I personally prefer them to be off, but some of the beginner players might want them to be on. I've used quite a few kart combinations and I've got to say, it controls well no matter how you combine your kart. Nothing I would change here. Graphics. Yes, this is the first Mario Kart to ever have beautiful high def graphics. And when you're doing in single player, or if you have two people there, it runs a beautiful 60 frames per second. If you have three or four people, it does go down to 30 frames per second. But that seems like a fair exchange for the beautiful graphics that are in this game. Battle mode. And here's where we get into one of the game's other biggest issues. No battle arenas. Uh, what? All eight of these so-called battle stages are simply clones of the actual tracks. 
I know a lot of people hate on Mario Kart Wii for having you race in teams, but I'd take the Wii's battle mode over this any day. Saxy and I know it. Mario Kart 8 is also the first Mario Kart to have live orchestrated music. And it sounds awesome. Retro tracks got a fresh shower musically, and some of the new tracks are just plain awesome. The saxophones from Bowser's Castle, Dolphin Shoals, and Big Blue are just plain orgasmic. I don't know who is playing the saxophones for Nintendo, but they deserve a raise right about now. The Verdict, and yes, I'm stealing this from IGN. Mario Kart 8 is just a great, fun, multiplayer game. Is it the best in the series? To me, no. Here are the pros and cons. Pros, 48 tracks. Most of them are awesome. Cool new items like the Piranha Plant and Super Horn. But there's great online mode, there's some great controls, beautiful HD graphics, excellent soundtrack, or should I say, sexy soundtrack. And here are the cons, the reasons why this isn't the best Mario Kart. A horrible character roster, <coughs> pinkled peach, <coughs> disastrous battle mode, did I have to even say anything about that, and flawed item distribution. The score? 8.0 out of 10. Mario Kart 8 has its issues, and that's why it gets an 8 for Mario Kart 8. But don't hate, mate, because an 8 is still great. I can't wait to debate you guys in the comments. Yeah. Bye.